even if home prices were to drop 50% tomorrow and interest rates were 1.5, you still probably couldn't even afford a house because of homeowners insurance. How much was her insurance bill? Susan Gregory's homeowners insurance renewal rate is almost $36,000. That is over 300% more than she used to pay. Many people that own a home are making the choice to sell because they can't afford the homeowner's insurance that is required to maintain their house. For the cost of insurance is forcing some locals to sell their dream homes. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look of what's happening across the United States with people and their homeowner's insurance and how this will even put a bigger dent in the affordability crisis here in the United States. And at the end, you can tell me, do you think anything's going to change in the next few years faster than this hair color? Or are we looking at more people forced to sell because of homeowners insurance? On Florida's West Coast in Naples, Therese Birch says her insurance company dropped her and it's been rough. We were just looking to insure our home the same as it was before for, you know, around $60,000. Went from 2,300 and the lowest bid that I got was 6,000 with higher deductibles. I consider a manufactured mobile home to be one of the most affordable housing options for most people. And when you're looking at coverage of only $60,000, to have to pay $6,000 a year to have your home covered is absolutely ridiculous. Not only that, like she said at the end of that clip, she's going to have to pay higher deductibles for that $60,000. And I know many of you are probably thinking, well, what if her home's paid off? Does she have to have insurance? No, she doesn't. But many people, if they have their whole home destroyed, don't have an extra $60,000 in their back pocket in order to replace that house. That's why you have insurance in the first place. They bought the most affordable housing option because that's what they can afford in most cases. And this is the only option they have is having to pay this. If you have a mortgage, you have no choice but to have homeowner's insurance. And a lot of these newer policies that are coming out are coming out with the worst insurance terms that you've ever seen in your life. They'll cover the structure, but they're not gonna cover the roof during a storm damage. They'll take off wind and hail, but you happen to live in Texas that has nothing but wind and hail. And if you have to replace a roof on a bigger house, that's gonna cost you tens of thousands of dollars. For my little house, it would cost me nearly $35,000 just to have that roof replaced by myself, if I'm lucky. As you know, building materials have even gone up in price. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of homeowners insurance companies are saying, that that's the reason why they have to charge so much more now. But there's other reasons too. Yeah, I think, you know, what we're seeing is um, insurance companies reacting to a lot of different forces. They're reacting to climate change. They're reacting to all the technology that's giving them a much more vivid um, view of the homes that they have been insuring. Oh, climate change. The subject that really gets people all amped up. I mean, honestly, I made a video not too long ago about this, saying that insurance companies were charging more because of climate change. And I got a litany of comments saying, you're wrong, there is no such thing as climate change. I didn't make the rules. All I'm saying is that's what insurance companies are saying is the reason why they're charging so much more. The costs of owning and maintaining a home have soared up 26% since 2020, according to one analysis. And home insurance is a major piece. That's up 20%. One of the reasons, climate change. Last year, the United States had a record 28 separate weather and climate disasters costing at least $1 billion. So I did a little Google searching and I looked online just to see, are we really experiencing a lot more weather disasters? Or is this like propaganda that they're giving us in an excuse to raise our insurance premiums? And let me just show you something. And then you make the decision. Uh, I'm just going by what Google says. The most hurricanes hit the United States was in 2005. It holds the record for the most hurricanes in the United States in a single season with a total of 15, including seven major hurricanes. Hurricane Katrina was the most devastating of the Gulf Coast in 2005 and also the deadliest hurricane in U.S. history. But was that the most expensive hurricane season in history? Let's take another look because, again, more Googling. 60 is the number of weather and climate disasters in the United States over the past three years, with the losses of exceeding $1 billion. $2.6 trillion is the total approximate cost of damages from weather, climate, disasters in the U.S. from 1980 to of August 2023. So not really present day, but this is what this is what the Google has. In 2022 alone, the U.S experienced $18 billion in disasters. So we had disasters from 2020 to 2022 that exceeded $1 billion. And then from 2022 alone, it exceeded 
$18 billion. That's that's a huge comparison. And we just had a Hurricane Burl that just went in through the Gulf Coast is hitting the Texas right now. And it was the strongest hurricane ever recorded in the month of June. So whether you believe in climate change or not, these are some of the reasons why the insurance companies are charging us more. The other thing, too, is you got to remember there's not just hurricanes, there's tornadoes, there's fire, there's flooding. Now, flooding insurance is a completely different type of policy when it comes to buying insurance. It isn't covered on your traditional homeowner's policy. New estimates from the federal government shows your flood rates could be doubling or tripling. I know many of you are thinking, well, you live in a flood zone. You deserve to have this happen to you. Well, many people that live along the coastline, of course, they take on that risk that they're going to flood. Some people have been forced to get a flood policy now in order to have insurance at all. So on top of the fact that they're paying more for insurance, now they're having to take on an additional policy just for flood insurance, even if they're not in a flood zone. The way that it works now, FEMA used to look at the flood maps and the floodplain and determine how much your policy was going to cost according to that actual flood map. Now they've changed it and they're actually increasing, no matter how long you've had your policy, 18% a year. Now, if you've been in an area that's already flooded, that's going to change more drastically. And they're going to continuously increase the amount that they're going to be charging you for flood insurance until it actually meets the value of the house. Again, this is another reason this is going to affect more people that live in a more affordable areas because they have more limited income. It's going to force them to have to sell. And who are going to be the people that pick up these houses? Private equity. Yikes. There's going to be many people that are going to be able to pick up the homes and use them as rental properties and tie in the rent into how much the insurance is. In some cases, those rents are going to be too incredibly high for a lot of people that it would have been an affordable place to live. We're building a bigger divide of the haves and the have-nots, not just because of the cost of the house or the cost of taxes. It's also because of the cost of homeowners insurance. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's because of climate change or do you think it's because they genuinely want us to pay more money? Or do you think they're trying to force us out of more affordable housing because they want big investment firms to buy them up? It's one of those conspiracy things I have in my brain when I think about insurance and what's really going on because it really seems to be affecting the most affordable areas in the most affordable housing across the United States. Not just Florida, not just Louisiana, not just Texas, even the Midwest in areas you never even thought of. We've never seen anything close to this. Even in Iowa, a place that doesn't get hard hit by hurricanes or wildfires. Can you imagine you've been paying your policy for the last 30 years? You've been doing everything right. You've upgraded everything that you're supposed to. And then your insurance carrier says, you know what? We're not going to carry you anymore. You, even though you've never filed a claim, by the way. Notice of non-renewal for their homeowner's insurance because the home is too old. Now, the age of the home, this property is no longer within underwriter's guidelines. Now, the home is not considered to be at high fire risk. The windows have upgraded just about everything from the doors and the windows to the landscaping and the roof. Any house built before 1970, they're rejecting just outright. There's literally no laws on the book that says that they are forced to cover this home, even though they've made absolutely no claims. Do you know they can pretty much cancel you for any reason? Matter of fact, they can even cancel you because of drone footage. Certainly insurers are using technology and innovation to make Make sure that they have all the variables possible to best underwrite. Eagle View is one of the companies providing aerial images to the insurance industry. Back in 2004, my husband and I were toying with the idea of selling our house. We had a hurricane that came through, which was Hurricane Charlie. And we did the right thing, which was we called our insurance agent and they sent an adjuster out there to evaluate our roof to see if we needed to have any repairs done to it. I did not follow the advice of my uh, neighbors, which was go ahead and hire a roofing company. I did what the insurance company told me to do which is hire the adjuster to come out to see if it needed a new roof. They went out on the roof. They told me, oh, you have at least five more years on this roof. Fast forward, we go to sell our house and the home inspector comes through and they, he said, this roof is shot. He took hundreds of pictures of all the damage that was done to that roof from that Hurricane Charlie where the adjuster said there was nothing wrong with the roof. I get the insurance companies are trying to save as much money as possible, but don't lie to your customers to save a few bucks. Easier said than done.
We have been paying you for years. There are many people that have never used your services, but they lied so they don't have to pay out. We don't insure our houses because we want to make a claim. We insure our houses so hopefully we don't have to, but it's there as a safety net. In this news clip, by the way, they're saying that insurance companies lost money in 16 states. Look where they highlighted. With insurance companies losing money in 16 states. They didn't highlight Texas, Louisiana, Florida. So why are they raking those people over the coals more than anybody else? Shouldn't the people that you see in the highlighted areas be paying a lot more? Something smells fishy. Something smells very fishy. And I know their biggest job is to make as much money as possible as they can from us, but they're not losing money from us. And they love to blame us, telling us that a lot of people are using it for fraud. Not saying the fraud doesn't happen, but what I am saying is they're still making really good money really, really good money, except in the areas that they consider high risk, which is Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. So what do they do? They're going to go ahead and pull themselves out because they're not making as much money as they could have. 50,000 Floridians are about to lose their homeowner's insurance as we head into hurricane season, and some of them don't even know it yet. And they said they never could have foreseen how much damage was going to be happening from all these storms which literally makes no sense to me. We've been warned that these storms have been coming since I was in high school in the 90s. They said that we were going to see more extreme weather events, but the insurance companies were like, oh, we, we didn't know. Oh, it's just so strange to us. Give me a break. You're a risk assessment and mitigation company, and you couldn't foresee these things happening, and now you wanna dump all of this cost onto us at one time? I think there's something else in hand when it comes to this, but your reasons why you think in the comment section, but I'm definitely seeing a lot more insurance companies be a lot more aggressive with people over something so incredibly stupid, like your house is too old. Even though it's been updated and brought up to standards of today, even if you've never filed a claim, ridiculousness. Homeowners are abandoning home insurance because of skyrocketing costs. According to Bankrate, the national average for home insurance jumped 20% last year to more than $1,400 annually, and that's just for a $250,000 home. Technically, you do not have to carry homeowner's insurance when you have your house paid off. But anybody looking to buy a brand new home with a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, or any kind of mortgage for that matter, your mortgage company is going to require that you have homeowner's insurance. It's already tied into your payment. And if your house is paid off, would you want to even risk it? Would you actually want to risk it if you bought a house in the early 90s, and now you've gotten to the point where you can pay it off and you don't have to carry insurance, would you take that risk of not carrying a homeowner's insurance policy? Mm, I don't know if I could do that. I don't think I could, especially with the cost of replacing items, the cost of building materials. Just to have that security and peace of mind, in my mind, is the reason why most of us carry homeowner's insurance. This will continue to affect affordable housing for years down the road. But she recently sold that home because she couldn't afford the rising insurance premium. Her monthly mortgage went up $1,200. Like, I feel robbed because I worked so hard to get my home. If you're in the market to find a very affordable home, and I know like here in Louisiana, it's been really difficult for a lot of people to find very affordable homes that have very affordable homeowners insurance. There are some things you can do. I would recommend personally, because this is what I had to do, is to work with an insurance broker that can look at several different policies when it comes to insurance. Not only that, you may have to raise your deductibles when it comes to this. That kind of sucks, but at least it's even though it's a little bit more out of your pocket, if something happens, at least you're covered, especially for your most precious parts of your house, like your roof. The other thing you may want to consider, do you remember bundling? Everybody talks about bundling. That can save you some money on your homeowner's insurance. Not only that, it can save you some money on your car insurances too. And lastly, you may want to adjust what coverage you get on certain items. Like for my personal house, I had way too much in contents. It was ridiculous. There's no way that I would ever need to spend that amount of money to replace everything in my house. So I adjusted that. Just know that you can work with your insurance broker and find ways that you can tailor make your insurance policy so that way it fits more within your budget and more affordable for you. And this is included if you're buying a brand new affordable home as well. Insurers are also searching for issues like undeclared trampolines 
flames, excessive yard debris, and overhanging trees. But do you think this is a master plan at work to get more of us to turn into renters for life? Or do you really think that homeowners insurance companies are facing a threat of more climate change and cost of replacement that they have no choice but to raise these rates so incredibly high? I want to know in the comments section below. To watch more videos about the affordability crisis here in the United States, you're going to want to watch these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.